Welcome, welcome everybody. I'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, got it posted a little early tonight. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome everyone. Thanks for showing up. We'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, don't know how busy we'll be tonight in this class. Uh, you know, not everybody's using Thinkorswim or anything like that. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll get the TOS all set up. And that, I mean, that really shouldn't take too long. Then try to get through everybody's questions and we will uh, probably look at some charts going into tomorrow. Oh, Shanks, river dance, man. Oh, man, dang, I completely forgot that I was supposed to bump last week's class to this week's class uh thank you for reminding me uh, i'm gonna send i'm gonna make sure we do that next week
Yeah, sorry about that, but thank you for reminding me. I just completely spaced out what we were doing. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Dirty river dancing. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. Ricky, what's up? Doing good, man. How you doing? Uh, you want to master T, man? It's an easy one. I mean, thing respects levels like nobody's business. You know, it's a boomer stock, so it trades very technically. You know, a lot of the time you're going to get those bounces where they should bounce. You know, you're going to get breakouts where it should break out. You'll ride levels. You know, um, it's a very simple stock to chart, very simple stock to trade. Um, definitely been having some great strength off the back of that ER. But as we push up into, you know, this area will be a little bit tricky. Obviously, you know, that 18 all the way up to 19 and then eventually shoot for that gap fill on up. Um, but I have a lot of levels on mine, you know, because I do trade it frequently. We can, uh, if you remind me at the end of this class, let's chart T, you know, I mean, people, <laughs> it only took me three years of talking about it, but people sure want to learn how to trade it now. So um, I think that's great. Uh, if you remind me, um, like I said, this uh, the, the thinker swim setup, 30 minutes, maybe if, if that long, you know, depending on how many questions we have. Um, and then we're going to look at some charts. And so let's chart out T, you know, and talk about some things that we're noticing on it. Um, I love people trying to trade it, you know, things like it, Coca-Cola, all that stuff. Everybody knows I, I try to encourage folks to trade those more than they're trading spy and QQQ, but, uh, you know, uh, it does seem to finally be catching on. Yeah, we'll just give it another second here. Uh, like I said, probably not too many people showing up tonight. Oh, we got 30. Eh? Yeah, nice. That's that's good. More than I expected. So we're good. How's everybody's day today? Fun one in the market. It's a good day to be a dip buyer. Jay, how we doing? Sunny, always here. Love a day like today. I mean, love a day like yesterday, man. You, you're going to dump the market on me six bucks on nothing. You know, that's, uh, uh, you know, that was, that was a no-brainer. So I swung some calls, uh, cashed those things that open, uh, scalp a put somewhere along here. This was the low of the opening range, so you know I was wrong or long down there. And then uh, wherever this, uh, let's see, let me just pull it up real quick. Wherever that retest was, yeah, I don't remember if I bought this one or this one, but bought one of those for a nice another little pop. Yeah, these ones were, yeah, this one was insane. I think I even said that in my tab, it's just giving out free money. Oh yeah, that was the last one. Oh yeah, it was this guy right here. Uh, just handing, that opening range is just handing us money. This one even gave you 20 minutes to get long down there, you know? But this is actually interesting. I mean, well, we're going to wait just another second to see if anybody else wants to show. But this is act actually an interesting trade today um, because I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with somebody today. And, um, uh, you know, we he everybody wants to trade flags. And as all of you know, or at least as most of you know that come to my classes, you're rarely going to hear me talk about trading flags. I might mention a flag just because it's easy enough to see. Um, but... I don't like thinking of them as a flag. I like thinking of them as a breakup or breakdown with consolidation. And there's, you know, technically speaking, there's two types of patterns on the market. There's continuation patterns and there's reversal patterns. So a, rever a reversal pattern is going to be something like a double top or a double bottom. A continuation pattern is going to be something like a flag. So, you know, on SPY today, we had, you know, we had this nice sell. So this is what people would call 
the pole in the flag, you know? Um, and what the pole is, is the breakout or the breakdown, you know, whatever it is. Well, then people started watching this for the bear flag. And so this is the problem. This is my huge issue with flags and people trying to trade flags um, and calling them a bull or a bear flag. You know, this is a bear flag, if you want to call it that, that failed and broke out and, you know, market ripped on us out, you know, that, that bear flag marked the bottom. So that's why I never like to think, and this is what I was teaching somebody in the class who we were able to like talk about it. That's why I never like to think of a bull or a bear flag as that. I merely just like to think of it as consolidation. Um, <clears throat> as all, you know, I don't care if the market goes up or down because I'll trade it long or short any any time, you know. However, I see a breakdown. I see consolidation. I now know that my entries on this are a break above that or a break below that. That's simple. I don't want to call it a bear flag and be stuck in the short bias and get blown out of the water. And so this was a this was a nice good teaching example today of why I don't like to trade, you know, think of things as a flag. I like to think of them as a, you know, breakout or break down and into consolidation and play the break of consolidation. Okay, with that, let's get uh, on to it. Welcome everybody, Dirty River, happy to have you here. Um, uh, yeah, that's and that's exactly as the opening range is setting. Right here, the opening range is set. This was the lowest low of that time frame. So opening range is set. So for somebody like me, you know damn well I'm not short down here. Um, that's for sure. Um, okay, welcome everybody. Dirty River, happy to have you here. We're going to be covering setting up Think or Swim tonight. Um, mm, I won't say all of us, but most of us who you know try to actively day trade throughout the day um, use Think or Swim. Um, it's of course you know great for swing traders, all of that as well. Um, it's got wonderful tools to buy or sell. Um, you know, so that you can kind of take your hands off of things and just let the market play out. Um, and then it's, in my opinion, um, it's just, it's the most powerful brokerage that there is. Um, you know, it has any feature you could ever want. You can get approved for any type of options you want. Um, it has, you know, obviously I don't use a lot of indicators, but it has any indicator you could ever want. If you can't find it, Google it and somebody has almost guaranteed made the indicator that you're looking for um, and you can find, you know, a usable version of it on Thinkorswim. Um, I like how the charts look. I like how everything is laid out in the platform. Um, I, you know, I, I work with a lot of people. I do a lot of one-on-ones. I do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, the main thing that people, the main issue people have with, well, there's two main issues. We'll talk about them both. But the main issue that people have with Thinkorswim is that, it is advanced, um, you know, and but that's good. You know, we shouldn't look at that as a problem. We should look at that as a benefit. You know, we are lucky as retail traders that we have the ability to trade on such a thorough platform. It covers anything we could ever want to do. Um, the other complaint about Thinkorswim is they do charge commissions. Um, and so depending on, you know, how long you've been trading, you can talk to them and you can actually get them to reduce your commissions. Um, however, um, for the average person, it's going to be 65 cents in and out of a contract. So it's going to cost you a buck 30 to get in and out of any contract. Um, you know, the argument always is, oh, well, it's, uh, we're going to be doing desktop. Um, the web app is not as thorough. The desktop has everything, um, but uh, the web app, not quite as good. Um, but so, uh, you know, everybody else says, oh, well, you know, Robinhood doesn't charge commissions and, and Webull doesn't charge commissions. And it's actually deceiving because they do, because there is federal commissions that are charged every single time. So all of those contracts do see a commission, though it's not as large as Thinkorswim's, obviously. Um, however, the point that I always like to make with people on that is if $1 is make or break on your trade, you know, and that's what your commission costs you, then it was likely a bad trade. Um, and even more than that, because, you know, TD Ameritrade, Schwab now, um, they do a little bit of payment for order flow, but not nearly as much as Robinhood or, um, uh, you know, not nearly as much as Robinhood or Webull. Those both make 
mm, tens of millions of dollars a year. And what payment for order flow is, is when you place an order, they actually send your order to a market maker that is then able to analyze your order before filling your order, which the market makers don't care what a retail trader is doing, you know, but be the why we should care about that. You know, we don't care what the market makers are doing. They they don't care what we're doing at all. The market makers make no moves in the market in regards to retail. Um, and so why we should care about that is merely speed of getting filled. And so what I tell people is you might have to spend a dollar on commissions on Thinkorswim. Um, however, I will almost guarantee you if you are using Active Trader, you will get at least a $1 better fill than Robinhood or Weeble. Um, and of course, if you're limit ordering, maybe not. But if you're market ordering, you will almost guaranteed get a better order or better fill on Thinkorswim than anything else. So it negates any, you know, $1 on your contract that you could ever even consider, you know. Um, and so with that, let's get to it. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to try to cover everything today. Um, I'm not going to, I'll try to go slow. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try to watch the chat. As all of you know, I am absolutely horrible at watching the chat during these. And I typically end up way behind, but we are going to get started. Um, and so something, um, I'm going to show you exactly what I do. I'm trying to make sure I'm not showing any like, you know, dumb positions that I'm in or anything. Um, so real quick, can everybody see what I pulled up on my screen? We don't need to be concerned with, we aren't concerned with what's on it quite yet, but I just want to make sure that everybody can see um, this screen that I just drug over here. Hopefully somebody says yes. Okay. Yep. So uh, we're looking at this screen right here. Hopefully I'm not going to click on anything wrong um, right here you will see charts. You want to click on charts and that is going to pull up, you know, the charting screen. Mine looks like this right now. Yours will not look like this when you pull it up. Um, when you click on charts, the next thing you want to do is click on flexible grid right here. Um, so, you know, just hopefully everybody's seeing this flexible grid. First, we click charts. Next, we click flexible grid. Um, so I'm going to, this next step I'm going to show you, we're only doing it to make my life a little bit easier. If you only have one screen, you don't need to do this next step. If you have multiple screens, this is how you can really make maximum use of your space. But so once you've clicked on flexible grid over here, you're gonna wanna come over here and where this drop down is, has three little lines, three little dots. You wanna click on that and then click detach. And so what that is going to do is that is gonna break you off just a whole new window that is, well, I didn't mean to do that quite yet. Um, I want to drag this away. Uh, so when you click detach, you're going to get something that pops up that looks, well, it's not going to have spy pulled up, but it's going to look like this. And so it's just going to be completely blank. Um, and so we just have a nice square here, you know, uh, nothing in it yet. Um, and this is, you know, our blank canvas that we can set up however we want. Um, how I'm going to show you to set it up today um, is this is going to be for, you know, the people with one screen. Um, yeah, so it might pull up four charts, Ralph. Exactly. I was just going to say, I don't remember how many it pops up for you normally, but we're going to get to that. And so uh, what we have pulled up right now, we got our one square, four squares or two squares, however much it pulled up for you. Um, this is our blank canvas. And so what we're going to set up today is actually... It's basically going to be for somebody with one screen that wants to be able to have an active trader involved and watch a few charts at the same time. Um, so if this is more than you want to watch, then you you'll you'll see we have complete control over whatever we want to do. So um, right now we have our blank canvas. What we're going to do is come up here and we're, there's this square that has nine little squares inside of it. You want to click on that and then you'll see right here, customize grid. Um, click that button. And when you click the customize grid button, you're going to have this little uh, uh, gray box pop up in the middle. Um, and it has a little thing that has a plus to the downside and a plus to the right hand side. And so what that is, is 
it's adding squares. So like I said, we're going to do I'm going to, we're going to do a setup that's basically for one screen today. Um, but if you got three, four, five, six screens, just detach and make as many as you want. Um, but if I had just one screen, I'm going to click the right box because I want another chart over here. And now I want to click the, the box with the arrow pointing or the plus sign on the downside. I want to click that and that. So at this point, we now have basically four charts like you got Ralph you were ahead of the curve you know um so we have our four charts here now um and so this is a nice layout for somebody with one screen um and so something that I might recommend for people um you know it all depends on what you want to do um oh and I should have said while I was doing this you can click and make these squares as big as you want you know maybe you want maybe you just want a little square you know anything like that you have maximum control on this thing um and so we have our four charts and so something that I recommend for people um you know Say you want to trade SPY. SPY is what you're into trading. It's what you're set on trading. But you know that you likely want to watch a couple of those big names that are in SPY if you're going to be trading, you know, the market movers. We'll just say Apple. Why not? Um, and Microsoft, two largest market caps in the entire stock market. So and make up, I don't know, 50. 20% of the S&P, 15% of the S&P. So worth watching. So now all I did was click up here in these little boxes and type in the stocks that I want to watch. Um, well, we're trading SPY. So down here, I might add SPY. And this is going to be the thing I'm actually trading. And maybe I'm going to, you know, make these a little bit bigger because I know, you know, I'm trading SPY, but I still want to have my eye on Apple and Microsoft. But this is my main focus is SPY down here. Well, the final step of trading this is something that, you know, um, again, you know, all I don't want to say all, but most of the good traders in here are and especially the scalpers, anybody looking for those quick, you know, volatile moves to or rejections off of levels, if they are successful, there's a very high probability they are using what's known as an active trader. And so down here, um, we're going to set up an active trader. I'm going to show you two different ways to set it up. Um, and so the first one, I think I finally, I was playing today. I think I finally figured out how to make it work. So hopefully um, I'm, I'm going to make this work this way. Um, but say we want to trade SPY. Um, we're going to pull up SPY uh, right here. And then you see this little arrow next to where we typed it in. If you click this down arrow, it will give you some different things to select from. Um, we want to trade options on SPY. So, and let's see if this is going to work for me. We want to trade options on SPY. So type in SPY again, hit enter, and this is pulling up what is known as the option chain for us right here. Um, and you can add more strikes if you want, um, you know, any of those things, you can add those if you want. Um, but, uh, you know, up here, like, see, this is only showing us, you know, 493, 92, 91, 90. That's what that is showing us. Those are the strike prices. On the left side is calls. On the right side is puts. Um, if you want to see more strikes, then right up here where it says strike, just type in a different number, 15. So now we can see some of those out of the money contracts. Well, you know, today is expired. Um, but say we're watching SPY and we know we want to trade SPY calls. So we type in SPY right here. And, you know, I like to trade at the money SPY calls. So you see where this pops up. We know this is a 492 call for SPY that expires today. You click on it. Well, now, and this will change. Um, you know, as once you've done it, it pulled up the chart for me. But over here on the right hand side, um, you see these different things to pick from. So we have Active Trader. You click on Active Trader right there. Um, so at this point, now we have a nice big Active Trader right here. And what the Active Trader is showing us is 
the current price that they are trading at um, is going to be highlighted at 12 or is going to be highlighted in gray. Sorry, it's at 12 right now. Um, so you can see this, this highlight right here. Um, this left-hand side is the bid side, which is where you buy. It's how much you are, you know, when people talk about the bid and the ask, the bid is how much you are bidding on something. Because remember, the stock market is just an option or just an auction. Um, we want to bid a certain price, or if we want to sell it, that's the ask side, which obviously means it's how much we are asking for that contract um, that we're trying to sell. And so this is how Flips and I and everybody else, this is how we trade options. Um, and then as you can see, you can always just click this down arrow and maybe you don't like the 492s, they're too expensive. So you want to go to the 493s, just click on it there. Um, so you're able to bounce between contracts very quickly. Or if we're coming into resistance over here, um, this is the same thing. Call side is on the left, put side is on the right. Well, maybe we think SPY is going to flush. So we can just click on that right-hand side and pull up the put contracts. Um, now, you know, whatever we want to trade, doesn't matter. We're going to go back to these because the spread was tighter. Um, you know, now we have this pulled up. Well, some of the, like, one of the best aspects of this active trader right here, um, and it's probably, I'm going to click things. It's probably going to give me alerts. I'm on my small port. I don't know if it's got any even buyer power left today. Um, when you click on these, um, you know, this is the bid side. So say we're trading SPY and we know that we don't want to buy the top of a green candle, but we want to look for a pullback. I can place on oh, these might not work because um, yeah, let's see. Um, oh, so one more thing. I always forget to teach this. So up here, we got buy market, sell market. I personally never use them, but we have this little arrow right here. If you click on this little arrow and then you click auto send, um, I, I could, I, so I actually meant to open this on paper, but if I click on on demand, it will close it and open it and it will end the lecture. So I can't change now. Um, I should have just done it on my big board, so it wouldn't matter. But so, okay, so click this down arrow right here. This is something you always want to have your eye on. There's two important things here. Quantity, this tells you how many contracts you are trying to buy. I highly recommend that every single time you are going to place an order, you look at the quantity. Um, all of us, these active trader have made the unfortunate mistake of maybe you're scalping a bunch of really cheap contracts, a spy going into close the next morning opens and you place an order for way too many expensive contracts because you didn't change the quantity. So always make it say one, um, or, you know, however many you want to buy, always make sure it's a number you are comfortable with and then click auto send. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you can't, so you can change it, but it's actually, you have to go, uh, so I'll show you real quick, just so we can, oh, but it's probably, I don't want, uh, so I don't, I don't want to show you because it, it has to show my account number. I apologize. So I can't show you, but you click setup top right hand corner application settings. And it's in one of the drop downs uh, right there. You should have no, you'll, you'll have no issues finding it or anything. Um, it's right there, but click auto send. So, and you know, always check quantity. I mean, it even happened to flips the other day. Well, now one of the great benefits of active trader is, and we'll see if this will pop up. So I've placed a limit order. And so where this can be, you know, where this can be very helpful and we're just going to, you know, this is after hours, this isn't how it is during the market, but we're going to pretend that we're trading and this is during the day and SPY has pushed up here. Um, and we're going to say to ourselves, I want to buy SPY calls because I think we're going to keep, um, uh, if you still see the chart over here on the right-hand side, just click on chart. 
um, and it'll get rid of it. See, it'll pop up like that or just get rid of it. We just want active trader selected. And if you are interested in the option chart, um, this is how I catch people lying about the money that they made. I pull up the option chart and I say, well, that entry never happened or that sell never happened. It's it's the easiest way to catch a, catch a cheater, you know? Um, but so I, I use that all the time. Um, but so over here, we're going to pretend we're trading SPY. We're going to pretend this is the market right now. And maybe you're listening to Flips Trading. And he says, you know, people are saying, oh, can we buy spy calls? And he says, no, wait for it to pull back. Well, you know, maybe he says you want to buy spy calls at 491.94. That is where this thing gets off. Oh, these contracts might not be the best one for it. Um, let me find something. Oh, I bet you maybe this one will maybe do better. Um, so we want to buy a pullback to here. We're pretending we're trading up here. Flip says buy spy calls at 491.47. Well, if you place this limit order, uh, you can see it will drag down and it puts, it's giving me rejections because it's after hours. It puts a line on the chart. So when Flip says buy spy calls, uh, I wonder if these ones will let me do it better. You know, when Flip says, you know, buy spy calls on the dip down to here, and then people are like, how did you get that fill? It's because he has a limit order sitting waiting. So we can be up here and he can say, buy spy calls on the dip. He does it with Tesla all the time. Buy them if they pull back to the 9 EMA. This limit order is just sitting there waiting. And so you don't have to try to market order in. You don't have to try to buy the bid. You know exactly what you're going to spend. And maybe you want to bump it up. Maybe you want to bump it down. All you have to do is click and drag it around the chart. Um, and it tells you where the price of SPY has to get to to fill that contract. Um, so wonderfully powerful tool. Um, you can do the same thing. The sell stop's going to reject because I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not approved for that level of options selling on this account. Um, and so say you want to set a stop loss. That's how we'll tell you, you know, oh, you know, stop out below here. We'll say, oh, you'll stop out at 70 bucks because that line pops up on your chart. So that's how we know where to place those orders. Um, on the other side of it, and this one's also gonna get rejected, say we buy spy calls down here and we're looking for this pop up to here. Well, on this right hand side, as long as you're above the ask, you can actually set a sell limit and these are gonna keep getting rejected. You can set a sell limit order. So that order will be sitting right there waiting and if you get one volatile wick up to it, it'll fill you and you'll be out of the trade. You don't have to click anything, you know, it's ready and waiting. And so for somebody like me that frequently trades levels to levels or like, you know, technical bounces up to EMAs or down from EMAs or anything like that, I use limit orders almost exclusively. Um, and so that's kind of quick rundown on Active Trader, why I love it. Um, and so with that, now that we have, we know how to set up our screens. We know, you know, we click up here if we want to add more boxes, if we want to add less boxes, whatever it is. Um, if you want to remove a box, again, a customized grid, just click on these and get rid of them. And so you can get rid of any of the squares that you have. Um, and so I'm going to do that for right now, because now we're going to talk about using some of the things that Thinkorswim offers. Um, I'm going to go, you know, we're just going to pull up SPY um, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I like to have on my charts and how to add them. Um, so one of the first things that we're going to do, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to undo it so you can see it um, in here. So see how the, the, on here, the volume is overlapped on my chart. And if you zoom in, it's all right here. I personally don't like this. I like the volume to be separate from the chart. Um, oh, and then let me do, let me change one more thing back to the wrong way. Um, and we'll cover this. We're going to go over this. I'm just undoing it real quick. Um, so I don't like the volume being on the chart like that. Um, you will also notice when you pull up, when you open Thinkorswim um, and you pull up a chart, see how this candle is right to the edge? That means that all we can see is right there. 
I personally like to be able to see to the right. I don't like watching a candle form on this far right hand side of my screen. I want to be able to kind of watch it in the middle of my screen. So how we change both of those, um, super simple, right click, come down to style and go to settings. And then you will have a whole bunch of settings. Like I said, Thinkorswim has just a ridiculous amount of settings that you can add. Um, and so um, pull up the settings. Right down here at lay, layout, you see overlap volume. That's what I click on or unclick it. So it's not checked. Um, the next thing we wanna do is go to time axis up here. And in time axis, you wanna go to this expansion area. And then you see it, it, it has just a zero and says bars to the right. And so what that is saying, how far to the right do you wanna see of this candle forming? I personally always do 40. And so what that is telling us is in this space, we will have 45 minute candles could fit in there. But when you're trading, it's nice to not have to be all wedged up on it. So you can kind of see left and then, you know, if you have trends or whatever, you can see to the right. The other thing we did is now we've moved our volume down here to the bottom. So it has its own area. It has its own, you know, X and Y axis to tell us the time and tell us the amount of volume in those contract or uh, shares, whatever it is, whatever you're looking at. Um, we're able to see it down here separate from the chart. And so again, both of those are personal preference, but in my experience, most people want to be, uh, uh, you know, most people want to be able to see to the right and most people want their volume down below. So now that we have that set up, now we just get to kind of look at our charts. Um, and this is when we get to start adding the things that we like to add. Um, and so I'm going to first show you how to add a couple of, um, uh, I'm just rolling my mouse. Sorry, I should have said that. I'm just rolling my mouse. Um, if you don't have a mouse with a wheel, then you got to click and slide it right down here at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'm just rolling my mouse. Um, but so now we're going to talk about adding some indicators to the chart. And so super simple. There's a couple ways to do it. You can do it through a right click. But me, I prefer to click right up here on this beaker that we have. Um, and so we got to get rid of that for now. Um, so you click on this beaker and then over here, you'll see studies. Um, and so you just click on the studies and then, you know, some of them will have like a name that you don't quite, you know, think of, but I, and I'm going to tell you how to add indicators that I use. As most of you know, I use very few indicators. Um, they're all, you know, indicators are lagging. They can only give you so much information. Um, so I just use a couple of them. Obviously one that I like, VWAP. So I type in VWAP. And then it pops up right here. I double click on it. And now it is added to my chart. Um, however, I started with VWAP um, for, I started with VWAP for a reason. Um, because I like to edit VWAP. And so if you have a study um, that maybe you don't like something on it, or maybe you trade Bollinger Bands and you want to trade the or change, you know, the, the deviation numbers. Um, this is how you edit a study. You just click on this little wheel and then it's going to pop up and it's going to show you the options that you have the ability to edit. And so a lot of people don't know it with VWAP because they're so used to seeing it without them, but it actually has an upper and I'll turn it on so you can see it. Um, this is full VWAP. It's actually three, it's actually three lines. Um, I don't like that. Um, if I'm going to trade deviations, I'm going to trade Bollinger Bands. And so down here, I click upper band and I click show plot. Lower band, show plot. Um, and we'll uncheck those. Now, if I apply it, I just have my VWAP line. Um, so again, I'm just going to add a couple uh, so that you guys can see how to do it, you know, kind of beat it India. Um, next one we're going to have is EMAs um, in Thinkorswim. Uh, if you type in EMA, you get a bunch of them. Um, and the interesting thing is you actually don't, when you type in EMA, you don't get the one that we want. Um, funny enough, you know, these are all, these all, you know, these all have their you know, places. These are some custom ones I've had made. Um, but we want an exponential moving average. So 
it, it's actually listed as MOV AVG exponential. Inconvenient thing to look up. Um, however, just double click on it. Now we got it. Um, most people trade multiple of them. So if you want two uh, EMAs, add it twice. And this is just listing the ones that we have. Um, so now again, we're going to go in and edit them. We can see our first one right here has some numbers. Um, second one has some numbers. They're the same. Well, we don't want to run two of the same EMA. So we click that little wheel again. Where it says length, that's where you want to enter your different numbers. Um, you know, when people talk about the 9 EMA, the 20 EMA, the 50 EMA, they're discussing the length that it is reading. And what that means is, you know, on a 20 EMA, where the line is, is based on math from the previous 20 candles. On the 9 EMA, it's the previous nine candles. So depending on time frame, it will change. Um, the only other thing I do uh, to EMAs, I change the color. Um, so now we have added, it's it the 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 default setting is a 9 EMA. So now we've added a 9 EMA. We've also added a 20 EMA. So if we click apply, now the 9 and the 20 EMA are on our charts. Um, if we want to edit anything again, you know, just click right up there. Really, really easy to do. We got the 9 and 20. We got our VWAP. Um, and so that's how you add indicators. Add them to your heart's content. You know, there are some different ones. I have some ones I like pinned in my tab. Obviously, one of the ones I love uh, from Toasty, buy versus sell volume. Um, so if you apply that one, then we have our green and red bars down here on the bottom. Um, uh, and so, you know, now we have charts with indicators, you know, and if you want to add more indicators, great. I'm just kind of doing like little bare bones. I mean, honestly, you don't need any more indicators than these three, in my opinion. Um, you know, you can always have scripts that chart things for you or whatever. Um, but now, uh, Josh, I got it pinned in my tab. Um, and I'll probably be linking that that thing today for anybody that wants to, you know, add some of the more unique studies I have. Um, but uh, so now we have this. So, you know, we got our charts. We know how to set out our layout. Well, now we need to know how to actually chart things. Um, and so, well, if people are asking, okay, give me just, uh, if I can do this fast, I'll get it sent to you. Um, oh yeah, we're going to do this fast. We got it. Uh, so for anybody asking, buy versus sell volume posted in the chat right there. Um, I might as well add, this is actually the one that I, prefer more than even the bottom one um buy versus sell volume up here i love it being visual um and so this is that one uh this next one is that's for the top left um and i really like this one and i'm showing you some of this is you know getting a little more advanced not something you necessarily need to do um but say we like you know we like that this is showing us the daily volume you can run multiples of anything and so with that one from Assassin, shout out Assassin, he's the goat, you know, you can watch something else. So say you're trading and you're watching, you want to know daily volume to see who's winning on the day. You know, obviously buyers smoke the bears again today, shocker. Um, but you want to know how the volume is on a five minute candle. So this right here can show you the five minute candle, um, how much volume, who's winning on that shorter time frame candle. So I frequently like to run multiple of them. Okay, but anyway, now we've got our charts, we've got everything we want to do. So now, you know, the next most crucial part of trading, we need some support and resistance. So obviously, we're going to come out here to daily time frame. You know, for me, I like to start on the daily time frame, obviously, big important levels there. And down here, lower right hand corner, we have a few things to choose from. Um, this one right here, mine is showing as a circle, yours is likely showing this little pointer mouse. Um, or pointer coarser. Um, if you click on that, all of these things pop up. Um, these are all different types of charting tools, um, drawing trend lines, drawing Fibonacci's, drawing, uh, you know, support and resistance. So that's what we, that's where I like to click. Just right down here, um, click on it. This level or this one right here um, uh, is you know, price level. So it's got a dollar sign with a line on top of it. So we can basically assume that's support and resistance. That's what we're going to use to do support and resistance. Um, and so um, now it's simple. 
Um, you know, this isn't a class on doing support and resistance, so we aren't really going to cover what I'm doing. Um, but say you're looking for things that you want to, uh, you know, you're looking for areas that you want to look at. Um, all you do and what I do. So you have to click twice. Um, you have to click twice. So like that, I do a double click. If you don't click twice, it moves it all around. You know, we, if you click once, then it's moving. Once you click twice, that level stays there. So this is the support and resistance price level tool. So, you know, you guys know me. I like to I like to mark those lows. I like to mark those highs. I like to know these kinds of levels, you know. Um, these are all the things that I watch. Um, and so that is how you draw support and resistance. Um, just click on this. Nice little, you know, simple tool. Um, the other thing that we're going to talk about today, um, because, you know, there's all kinds of things. We got regression lines. There's so many different things that you can do. Um, and next one that I love is right next to the price level, the trend line. Um, and so, you know, I the market loves trends. The market loves trading around trends. You should always be aware of where trends are. Um, you know, again, I like to draw trends a specific way. Some people might like to draw them different. Um, but same basic idea as a price level. You click once, you drag it where you want it. When you click again, it puts the trend line down for you. Um, you know, I get asked about a lot. My trend lines are big and fat and yellow. And I do that for two reasons. One, they're super easy to see. Um, and then number two, uh, you know, you can have, uh, you can have, you know, your trend line, but you never want to think of it as to the penny. And so when I have a nice big thick trend line like this, I'm able to say, you know, hey, that's, you know, a couple few cent range um, that I'm working on. And so how we change that is when we draw our, you know, we draw a trend line. Um, and if you're just trying to change the settings, you know, you can just slap one on the chart somewhere, wherever you want, you know, you right click on it and then go edit properties. And when you edit properties now in here, you can see color, you know, obviously I picked yellow and then I set the width to three. You can make it, I mean, you can make them like big old fat honkers like that if you want. Um, it will come like this. I don't like a thin one. So for me, I've personally decided that I like it on three. Um, and so that's where you can edit those. If you don't like where you drew your trend line, do the same thing. Right click on it and remove drawing. Um, you know, right click on it remove drawing if you don't like it. And so that's how you edit the settings on those. Um, then you can do the same thing on your price levels, right? Click on your price level, edit properties. Um, you will, this is something that I think you should do. Most people do. Um, you will see left and right extension. If so, if these are off, um, I'm just going to turn them off for a demonstration. Now, if these are off, your price level is, oh, it's yeah, it's hold on. Here we go. So if you have these turned off, it just draws a price level for the distance that you draw it. See, but when you have it turned on, then you get this entire length, you know. Um, so that is something that I always recommend you do just because, you know, price levels go all the way across the charts. They, they aren't just for well, I mean, some weird trading styles, you know, do actually have them for just little things like that, you know, um, but if you, in my opinion, you want to edit it, you want to have left and right extension on, um, and then sh uh, show price right here. Um, if you, you want, and you want to show the price, at least for me, so you know where that level is. Um, you can have it on the left if you want. Um, I prefer it on the right. You know, you, uh, it's all personal preference on that kind of stuff. Um, and so I like to have it on the right. Um, so that's always what I do. Another thing that you can do with price levels, um, see where it says name. You can type in a name. So we're just going to say class level. Why not? And then here where it says show name, if you show it on the right, we now have class level 469.83. Don't chart that level as like, an, I mean, I guess it is a good level probably, but don't, you know, don't worry about the specific level. We're just talking about how to label it. Um, so a situation where I might use that, you know, um, if it's not making fun of friends or that kind of thing, well, maybe I have some different studies I want to use. I might drag this thing to my 50 SMA right here and use that and say, you know, and now I can go onto my price level and I can edit it and I can just write 50 SMA. So now that it's labeled, 
if I, well, we're a long ways away from it, but if I zoom into the five minute, it's still going to be right there. And I can consciously say when I'm trading, okay, hey, that's the 50 SMA. Um, so that's something that I like to do. Um, this did remind me one thing that I forgot to show you all now. Um, we're going to go back and we're going to add our indicators again. Um, real quick, we're just going to do real quick. We're going to do a VWAP, oops, just to add it. And then we're going to add an exponential moving average. So we have our, you know, we have our indicators on here. We have our ugly VWAP because we didn't edit it. Um, and so say you like the studies that you have loaded, you know, you want to be able to kind of look at those studies quickly on different charts. All you do, right, you right click, come down to studies, save study set. So and I'm going to show you how we can apply this, you know, real quick. Save study set. We're going to call it class studies. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, class studies. So now it's safe. Well, if we pull up another chart next to here, uh, you know, we'll go spy. We'll go to something different, I suppose, you know. Um, Dusty, why not? Um, so now we have another chart. Again, you know, I just pulled up another chart like we already had or whatever. Um, so, but it has, well, since all mine are just saved as default, it has nothing on it. So we have our new chart here, but we're like, you know, actually I, I want to watch, you know, I need my nine EMA. I need my VWAP on here. So all you do, right click, come down to studies, load study set, and then click on whichever one you want right here. Class studies. There's our nine EMA and VWAP loaded up. Um, so you can have, you know, 20 screens running and it's really quick to just add those study sets to it. Um, super piece cake, you can have a bunch. Um, and so that's what I did, you know, as, as a lot of, you know, I, I trade, you know, I trade multiple different EMAs. Um, so maybe I'm on this longer time frame, and I want to, you know, I want to see where the 2050, 200 SMA. Oh, okay. We're, we're way above those. So, you know, I don't need to worry about those, but maybe I want to look at some more like shorter different EMAs that react more quickly. So I'm going to pull up the five and 13. I can just click on them. That's simple, you know? Um, and so you can just cycle between them very, very easily. Um, and so, uh, uh, oh, so I see your question. I shouldn't have said it's my default, but I, this is a squares I already trade on. So it's always going to open the last thing that you had open in those squares. That's why I pulled up indicators that I obviously use every day. However, um, anything that you change, you know, say uh, like if we, I think VWAP lets you do it. Um, if you change something, now nah, VWAP of course doesn't let us do it. Um, some of these indicators you can do save as default down here, it'll be in the lower left-hand corner. So if you've edited some studies to work how you want, you can just save it as default. But my, I shouldn't have said default. It's just loading the last thing I had on those squares because um, this was my square that I, I trade in every day, you know? Um, and so with that, I think we have covered it all. We covered doing new squares. We covered, uh, you know, setting up an active trader, we covered getting your indicators on there, how to chart levels, how to chart trend lines, you know, well, not how to chart them, but how to use the tools to chart them, um, saving study sets. Uh, ooh, long to short position, you know, man, there might be, but I don't like those things. If you're trading futures, they're powerful. They are not powerful on options because it's so... Um, uh, it's, you know, th those things don't take Greeks into account, the, you know, the the red and green boxes. However, um, you know, a lot of people like to do that. They like to identify their risk and reward. You know, it's like some of those gurus have made it like super possible. So what I recommend you do more than anything is say, you know, you're buying calls down here. Just draw yourself a, and I probably did that too fast. Draw yourself a little box. Make it, that's a horrible color though. Let's get that like out of there, you know, but like, you know, maybe some more red muted color. Um, just draw yourself a box. And so that's the same thing down here. Um, you know, this is, this is your, you know, this is your tool. We might have a risk reward, like drawing thing on here. It doesn't look like it. Um, but if I'm doing that, then, and I'm, you know, targeting some of these like previous highs or whatever it is, all that I'm going to do is kind of just draw myself two boxes, you know, I'm going for these highs. So then I can, you know, you can make it, you know, those 
everybody thinks of those like you know their new like hip colors or whatever you know here's your risk here's your potential reward um and so i'm sure that there's I'm sure there's a way to draw one on Thinkorswim, but I don't use those things. And because they don't take uh, either volatility or anything like that into account, um, uh, on option contracts, they don't help a lot. On something like futures that is extremely defined, you know, it's basically just shares. Um, they work really, really good. And really, they give you the exact idea of how much money you will make or lose. Um, yes. Wow. Will. Thank you. So one last thing I wanted to show. Um, and we didn't talk about it up here next to where we type in these, uh, where we type, uh, in, you know, whatever we're trying to look up. Um, there's a little thing you can click down. It's the link feature. Um, uh, and so it just gives you numbers over here. Um, and so what it does is you can link, you know, charts or there's, this is actually another way to send things to your active traders through the link in the trade tab. It's, it's mostly how I do it. Um, but you can link multiple charts. So actually, and I'm just, you know, I was going to show you how to do it, but, um, so you click a link, you can make it a one, you can make it whatever you want and you can have two things. So I'm just going to drag my other screen over here because the person asked me right here, I have two charts both QQQ, both linked to nine, except I have the five and 15 minute. So, you know, there's a lot of noise on the five minute. If you look at the 15 minute, all of this red disappears and it starts to look, you know, better. So yeah, I frequently link charts. Um, and so how you do that is the same thing over here. You know, say we want to look at SPY. You type in SPY, it pulls it up on both of them. So you can set it to 15 minute, you can set it to the 30 minute, whatever you want. Um, and you can link different squares together. So if you do want to look at multiple things, you know, like, oh, let's look at meta. And like, it has these like crazy candles. And then you look at this one, it's just one giant candle, you know, um, you can, you can link them to however many different things you want, different time frames. Um, and then if you because so this drop down, like I said, I have trouble with it. It works like 50 50 for me. The other way to send an option contract is right here. You click on the trade tab, um, ignore my position. Uh, you click on the trade tab, and this is going to, you know, and this is from that main screen we started on. This is going to show you the same thing. The drop down is going to show you just bigger. Well, say again, we want to trade spy calls. If we, you know, if we don't use the drop down and we have this linked, we can right click on whatever contract we want to trade. And then when we right click down here at the very bottom, you'll see send with this little link. You'll notice as well, now we have a number, but it's the same as here. So if we want to send it to something, right click send, click number one, it is now sent here and it can be on our active trader if we want it. Um, so couple different uses for linking those things if you ever want to um so thank you uh will for asking that uh yeah jay of course one more time uh we'll just go from from blank nothingness um so we got our you know you want to be on flexible grid um in the charts tab click on flexible grid top right hand corner these little squares click customize grid right here um and that pops up this little box in here so Plus to the right-hand side, adds a chart to the right-hand side. Plus to the downside, adds one below, adds another one below. And, you know, you can add, I mean, you can add them to your heart's content, depending on how big your screens are, man, you can fit a ton of charts. Obviously, when they start getting this small, um, you know, it's harder to, like, you aren't seeing, like, fine detail or anything, but you can have as many as you want or as few as you want, really up to your computer and your your screen size and all of that. Um, and then, again, just the right-hand one, the one with the slash on it, is how you get rid of them. Um, so you can really set it up any size, shape, anything that you want, anything that you want. Okay, now I think we've covered it all, linked, you know, linked everything, done all of that. I think we got it all. I think we got it all. Um, we did indicators, anything like that. Oh, yeah, of course, TOS does. Everything does now. Um, but yeah, yeah, of course, TOS does. Um, you know, I, I'm not entirely opposed to the pattern day trading rule. I think that it it, it helps people not over trade, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you should likely be on a cash account just so you don't like 
hold a position so you don't get a meaningless violation, you know, like the amount of money I've watched people lose because they don't sell because they're worried of a PDT is wild, you know? Yes, yes, thank you, Jose, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, Meta, we're gonna just, uh, God, Meta, you just are insane. Um, so Meta, say we like, you know, oh, we're like, oh, we got a Meta level here. It's like 50, $60 above this right now. But say, you know, oh, we like Meta. And so we're on our five minute chart. Um, down here, lower, lower right hand side, um, you'll see drawing set, it says. So save as new drawing set and then just type in whatever you want to call it, Meta. So you save it as Meta. Now, anytime you want, you can pull that out. Um, so I'm going to go to spy because I have quite a few of them, you know. Um, so for me, um, I have this spy. This is the chart that I quite literally trade, you know, every single day. Um, uh, it's the one that I use, you know. And so this is the chart that I will always trade on spy. Well, I also have another chart that is just um, on the daily. It's just funny levels of where like my friends said they thought the market was going to die for the rest of the year and we've run 90 points from there um so you're able to just switch between them really really easily um you can have as many as you want you know you can have your funny ones and then you can you can have your serious one that you trade on every single day the levels that you care about any of that stuff um so just right down here save drawing set and call it whatever you want and then again, you know, if you want to add your indicators just down here in the study, save study set, um, load study set for whatever you want to load. And that's it. Like maybe you like the 20 EMA on the hourly, like that one. It's really great. Uh, yeah, chart T. We're going to do that real quick. And then that's probably, uh, well, unless there's more questions, we're going to talk about it. Uh, let's do create drawing set. Uh, 2024, new year. Um, what's the fee for real time on TOS? It's, well, it's free. Um, as long as your account is over 500 bucks, maybe 300 bucks. I don't remember the exact number. Um, but what, basically once your account is funded, just message the support people and say, I want real time data and they give it to you. You know, it's not going to be the super deep depth, the market David that, uh, from like CME or anybody that you have to pay for. Um, but it's what every single person uses. It's, it's plenty. Um, so at and um, of course my favorite stock, uh, I mean, that's kind of a joke, but I also do. I really do love trading it. Uh, main thing to take note of, what everybody's watching, this gap. Um, as we get closer and closer to it, you know, you always, you never know if a gap is going to fill. So you don't want to try to trade this gap fill until it starts filling. And you actually want to tread at least a little bit lightly, um, you know, being long up into it. Um, you know, we're getting close now, 75 cents above us or whatever. Um, one of the major things that I think that we should all take note of is, you know, it's in a strong uptrend at this point. We've pulled way away from the trend. We've had some nice consolidation, very strong uptrend. Next things that we want to look for is we want to look for some of these big areas of resistance or support, you know? Um, and so how I like to do that is looking for these major highs and lows. Um, as you can see, um, and I can send you more of my levels too, if you want them. Um, it's at and So it moves very slow, um, but it respects levels very, very well. So if I was trading AT&T, um, and I am trading AT&T, um, these are going to be the levels. Something right around these levels are going to be the ones that I like to watch. Um, and so as we, you know, ideally we want to track up here to this gap fill. If we're long, we likely want to be getting out of longs until we are confirming, you know, ideal world to fill, you know, get a gap fill is we come up to it and we take the risk of swinging, trying to get that gap fill. The other one is we wait for a little breakup into there and a retest because then we're going to reduce our risk a lot. So if we pull back, you know, we break up and we pull back and we get long here. We know we can just stop out if we end up deciding to not go fill that gap. Otherwise, we're kind of targeting the top of the gap. The only the only level in there that I 
wouldn't say I'm concerned with, but is going to be this one. You know, this was a big earnings gap down. Um, and so target up into there. However, if we kind of fizzle around here, that's when you likely want to try to look to short it. I'm not saying it's going to go all the way back to the 18, but play in this area, you know, shorting the highs, longing the lows above 18. Um, I swung long on it today. I liked the close on it. I like a daily candle like this. To me, this is a very bullish candle, you know. Um, we can actually talk about it a little bit. Um, red candle, no denying it. At one point, it was a solid red candle that turned into a mostly green candle closing or mostly uh uh, wick candle closing pretty dang near its highs. And we can see down here, there was double the buyers as sellers. So to me, this is a pretty bullish candle worth swinging long on. So I did swing long on it. Of course, with time, those contracts are cheap. Um, but I would mostly be trading around these levels. You know, if you're long, you want to be trimming here. If we're breaking above here, move your stops up, you know, kind of ratchet the stops up to right below there, targeting that bottom of that gap fill. And then again, next one is going to be that trade up through the gap fill. Um, and if we get above there, we should we can get to push into, you know, 20 or so sooner than later. Um, that's obviously going to be big final target. Um, T has not spent much time above uh, 20 in recent times. So that should really kind of be the upper echelon of what we're looking for. But really, really nice move. A lot of you might remember I alerted T calls um, right here. Then they got downgraded and we got down 4%. And then the next day we gapped up, I think it was around a, a, an 8% gap up or something. So we got those ones ended up being a nice one for us. Um, but easy one to stay bullish on. Company's been around forever. This was literally a like 25 or 30 year double bottom, triple bottom right down here. So I had to try to get long down there. Um, again, pushing up to those highs now though. So we got to see as you know, it doesn't spend a ton of time up here. So we, we're we're treading more lightly on longs now, but eventually targeting that 20. Am I a T shareholder? No way. No way. I just trade options on it. The returns are great on it. Um, it is a dividend, nice dividend, 7%, 7%, 8%, something like that. Um, but when you really zoom out, like, uh, let's go a long time, you know, on T, uh, it hasn't been the best long hold in all honesty. There you go, 6.5%. Um, uh, you know, hasn't been the best long hold. There's no denying it. Don't get me wrong, all time this thing's up 400%, which is still huge, but it was up, you know, 800% or whatever up here. So, um, you know, I do think that if you were a buyer, you should have been a buyer down here at like 14, you know, because it's spent very, very little time down that low, you know? Um, so that's really where you would have wanted to be a buyer on T. Um, but still, it's a company that like I'm, I'm bullish on. The contracts are very fun to trade. They can pay very, very well percentage wise. Um, and they offer a nice low risk, slow moving trade that you don't have to, you know, freak out about. There you go, Jay. Hopefully that sends her to all time high. Um, okay. So little tea analysis, got to love it. Love the tea requests. Um, hopefully we covered everything in Think or Swim. Um, you know, I see a couple of people disappearing. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, really great turnout tonight. Um, hopefully we got all those questions answered. Um, as always, uh, you know, send me DMs if you have any questions, anything like that. I'm always happy to help out. Um, I'm sure there's some things I forgot to do. Um, probably talked about some things that didn't matter. Um, and uh you know hopefully we got it all covered so thank you everyone so much for being here and uh i appreciate it uh should be uh uh should be posted tomorrow next day um joe's been doing a real amazing job hey joe um at getting them posted fast so hopefully uh uh you know hopefully um it'll be posted real soon and then i will pin it in my chart when it happens uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe Nando uses Trading View. I don't know. I don't use Trading View. Uh, Joe uses it. Again, save Joe. He knows everything about it. If you want to ask him, he's really, really good. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yep, Lambo's knows. Lambo's knows. Okay, well, if that is going to do it, thank you all so much. And uh, uh, we will catch you all tomorrow. Um, Trade safe Friday, Thursday. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. So everybody trade safe. 
uh, play with your active trader, have some fun. And tomorrow is February the 2nd. And we will catch you all tomorrow. Have a great night.